Bonjour, je m'appelle. Oh, I'm sorry. I should speak in the English, but my English is not the best, but I'll try. My name is Joseph Napoleon Bonaparte. I would like to tell you a little bit about my life. I've found it to be very interesting, and I think you will too. The reason for my telling you about me is that I have a very special connection to the New Jersey, particularly a little city in the central part of the state named Bordentown. You may have heard about my famous brother, Napoleon Bonaparte, no? <laughs> ah, Napoleon. I am Napoleon's oldest brother. We were born on the island of Corsica. Corsica is located in the Mediterranean Sea. It is south of France and west of Italy. When I was born on January 9th, 1768, Corsica was a part of the Republic of Genoa. So, I was Italian. Napoleon was born 19 months later, and Corsica had become a part of France, so he was French. <laughs> Crazy politics, eh? My early years were very busy. My parents, they sent me and Napoleon to France to study the French, after which we both wanted to go to military school. Unfortunately, my father died and I returned home to become the head of the family while Napoleon continued his military studies. While caring for my family and our estate in Corsica, I did find time to study, and I became a lawyer. <laughs> and a pretty good one, too. <laughs> As Napoleon rose to power, he appointed me to be the king of Naples in 1806. Then, in 1808, my brother made me king of Spain, a position I did not want, as I was very happy in Naples. But I had no choice. You try saying no to Napoleon. My time in Spain was very difficult. The Spanish people, they did not welcome a foreigner as king, so I was not very popular. In 1813, the French were defeated at Victoria, Spain, so I had to leave Spain. I did take with me some paintings and a few baubles, though. I returned to my home at Montefontaine, just outside of Paris. Things were about to get very tense. In June of 1815, my brother and his army were defeated at the famous battle that I'm sure you've heard of, Waterloo. Napoleon surrendered to the British, and he was taken to St. Helena, a place you do not want to go, let alone visit. If I had stayed in France, King Louis XVIII, he threatened to kill me. If I went to another country in Europe, I would have become deported to a remote part of Russia. So we limited options. I had no choice but to escape to America. It was very difficult to find a ship to take me to America. But with the help of my friends, I found one. I chartered the ship, the Commerce, and with a small entourage and under the alias of Monsieur Souvillieri, as I did not want my real identity to be known, I made it to New York. Eventually, I settled for a short time in Philadelphia. Philadelphia was not the place for me, though. So, on the recommendation of another friend, and because of its location between New York City and Philadelphia, I purchased a beautiful property, a 211-acre farm just outside of Bordentown, New Jersey, called Point Breeze. 
it overlooked the Crosswicks Creek just as it enters the Delaware River. The land I owned eventually grew to 1,800 acres. By the spring of 1817, I had completed my first magnificent mansion. It was spectacular, if I do say so myself. There were huge paintings by the famous master painters, sculptures all over, exquisite furniture, and beautiful rooms and incredible gardens with many magnolias and rhododendrons that I helped to plant and care for. I had many more books in the library than than did the Library of Congress. It was said that next to the White House, it was the grandest house in America. Despite frequent visits from notable men and women, I desperately missed my wife, Julie Clary. Because of her frail health, she was never able to make the journey to Point Breeze. Unfortunately, in January 1820, while I was away, the mansion burned to the ground. The cause of the fire to this day is still unknown. The townspeople of Bordentown tried to save the mansion, but could not. At great risk to themselves, however, they were able to rescue most of my famous paintings and sculptures and other valuable possessions. Nothing was stolen, too, and for that I was very, very appreciative. I immediately began building my second mansion where the stables had been located, closer to the New York Turnpike. Present day it is called Park Street in Bordentown. This was to be just as magnificent as my first mansion. Just like my home of Mortfontaine in near Paris, I built large tunnels. I connected my second mansion to the lake house, and they were used for transporting goods and to provide protection from the elements. Another accomplishment about which I am very proud is the beautiful landscaping that I did at both of my first and second mansions. I built 12 miles of carriage roads so visitors could see all of the incredible sights on Point Breeze and planted many different species of trees and bushes and created a large lake on which I put large boats in the very shape of swans in which visitors could navigate the lake. Everyone was very impressed with all that I did at my Point Breeze estate and I enjoy the regular working on the property myself. Many people came to visit Point Breeze, many of whom were, were famous. The most notable dignitaries included the Marquis de Lafayette, Jean Quincy Adams, Henry Clay, Stéphane Girard, Nicholas Beadle, Joseph Hopkinson, another Bordentonian, the entire New Jersey state legislature, and Charles Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, who later became Napoleon III. After 16 years at the Point Breeze, I returned to England in August of 1832 in the hope of putting Napoleon's son, the Duke of Reichstadt, Napoleon II, on the throne of France. Unfortunately, Napoleon II was quite ill, and he died before I arrived in England. I stayed in England for three years and returned to Point Breeze in 1835. I returned to England in August of 1836 
As I was still unable to go to France, I again returned to America in September of 1838. The next year, my daughter Charlotte died after childbirth, and my sister Caroline Murat also died. The next year, I returned to England for the third time, and in 1840, to my dismay, I had a massive stroke, leaving me unable to speak and paralyzed. In 1841, still quite weak, I was finally allowed to go to Genoa. After 26 years, I was finally reunited with my wife, Marie Julie. I died in Florence, Italy, on July the 28th, 1844. And left my beautiful Point Breeze estate to my grandson Joseph. And in 1847, after most of my possessions were gifted or auctioned, he sold the property. I was never the fierce warrior that my brother Napoleon wanted me to be. We had very different political and philosophical views. Despite these differences, we remained very close throughout our lives. With my beautiful Point Breeze estate, the incredible art I displayed, the incredible furniture I had built, and the incredible landscaping that I designed, I inspired many who came to visit. I loved my years in America. And the friendships I formed, including the lovely people of Bordentown.